Everybody, if you're there already, I'm just getting everything set up. Just gonna share on Facebook. Oh, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Hang on, Kiwi. It's hot in here all of a sudden. Hey Trevor, how you doing? Just got the stream set up, posted it on Facebook, posted it on YouTube, and just getting ready. I'll be right back. <laughs> no, I can't hear you. <laughs> but can you hear me? Okay. Haley's just putting the bird to bed. Oh, here comes Kiwi. We put the bird away, or? Oh, sure. Yeah, I can hear you and see you. Okay, great. We're just gonna go put the bird to bed. Okay. We'll be right back. Hopefully, other people find their way. Thank you. 
Here we are. This has got to be the most exciting live stream ever. Woo! Feels hot in here, doesn't it? Ten minutes and counting. Move your feet down. Yeah, I'll move your feet down. Yeah, I might. I'll flip the camera just a little bit too. How's that? That's a bit better. Jerry, Jerry, how's it going? Nice to see you, although we can't see you, but still good that you're here. You are fuzzy? I'm going to take a trailer. Can we? Can we? I'm just going to take a trailer. Okay. It says we're fuzzy. Oh. That's not good. Actually, it is actually. Yeah, yesterday when we tested it, everything was fine. We can move the camera a little closer. Oh, no, no. no I'm sitting. No, it's, uh, it's the screen's fuzzy. <coughs> Oops. No, I'll try moving the camera a little bit closer. Everything was good last night. Is that any better, Trevor or Jerry? I thought we had all the technical That's better. details. About the same. Oh my goodness. Oh, is that? Oh, that's gone worse, I think. Gone worse. Oh man, we just tested this last night. Better? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I believe it was just the lens. Oh, it looks. <laughs> you forgot the makeup. Greeny, oh my goodness. This Where is, is it? Where's the rain? No, no, greeny. They say oh, the, cool. the feet is greeny. Yeah, we forgot the makeup. Okay, I got one more thing I can do. Well, this is going to be very disappointing if the whole thing is fuzzy. Okay, I can do one last thing to move, move it back. No, move it back, moving it back, see if you make it worse. I just used it on the support group. I just used the camera on twice. I 
Yeah. Better? Better? No. Yeah, better. You're not convincing me, do you? You can pull that off and give the lens a good one. Give that a little red. Yep. Uh, it's a little bit better. What is it? I can't see the letter. What are you saying? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the camera's lighting. Well, we got lots of light. Maybe it's too much light. Do you want to flick that on? Yeah. Oh, that made a massive difference on my end. I don't know what's up with the camera. It's a little disappointing, but uh, uh, any better? Oh yeah, I've been uh, attending a group on the PMD Alliance. <clears throat> oh, it's, oh, good, it's better. Oh, hey, Jerry figured it out. Woo! What was wrong? He said he suggested the lighting. Yeah, I guess it was too bright. There you go. That makes me really happy. Technical difficulties last time. I wanted to avoid them this time. Halfway there. Halfway there. Yeah, so I've been attending a support group on the PMD Alliance. They have one every second Tuesday. Yeah, so the second and fourth Tuesday of the month has been really good. A nice change. I'm going to need a shot. Okay. Yeah. Okay, medication time, and then we'll get going. Who who else is here? Yeah, we do. Again, one sec. You're gonna tell me. I'm taking a deep, I'm taking a little bit, I'm taking a big off, so we're just going to have a shot. Ouch. <coughs> okay, good. Before we start. Where did I put it? In my stomach. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. I open it up. Okay. Grab it there. There Switch. Switch, yeah. Oh, good, it's not bleeding. It's not a bleeder. Switch. Hey, Ann. Good to see you. Just having a bit of a one off. Just took a shot, so we'll get going in a moment. Hopefully the picture is good. Two weeks to go back to the specialist. Oh, yeah. There we go. Where's the towel? I feel like he's sitting on it. Okay. I'll get a clean mix. Shoot. 
Shelby over there. Okay, there we go. <coughs> oh, can everybody hear us and see us all right? Dude. I'm going to drop the freeze. Is that better? Oh, gosh. <coughs> oh, good. Trevor says yes. Woo. Thankfully, we figured it out. Okay, good. It's good. Okay, so 4.30. Here we go. Woo. On time. Just on time. So, I guess we can talk about the sponsor first. That's kind of exciting. So, our new sponsor is... Control click. Oh my gosh. What are you doing? I'm a little off, so everybody just be patient while I sort this link out. Hopefully you're not looking at my nostrils. Oh, hey, Sherry and Mom. So here's the link to our new sponsor. If anyone wants to check it out. It's Rogue Red Light Canada. And they produce, obviously, red light. They sell red light therapy products. And with that, there's a couple links. Well, I think I, I, <laughs> I gave you the wrong link. Oh, no, I didn't. I gave you the right one. Yeah, yeah. And my brain's just a little bit slow at the moment. Yes, that's the right link. Woo! Okay, I clicked on the right one. <laughs> oh my goodness, when you're off, you don't expect this. So if you use that link, you can save on whatever sales they have for red lights. And then you get to indirectly support the channel at the same time, which we are very grateful for. We've been able to get some new equipment. I've been able to get a new phone for um, recording, which is really going to help with the green screens. The great thing about the green screens is wherever you are, you can be wherever you want to be. So I cleared out my um, bedroom closet and hung up the green screens. And yeah, it'll be nice to film anywhere in the world, Paris, France, Italy, maybe even Australia. So yeah, if anybody's thinking about a red light, Oh my goodness, the computer wants us to restart the computer. We're not going to do that. Yeah, if anybody's thinking about red light therapy, I'm going to be getting a light as soon as I can. Of course, there's a couple other things going on in the background that we're taking care of that we're setting up for next month, but probably after that, I'll be able to get one. And then I'll be posting some videos on my progress, but there are a couple couple of really cool studies that have been done recently. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Going brains. Control click to open. Brain's starting to catch up. Okay. There we go. I think I clicked on it too many times. Okay. So here is the first study that I wanted to share with you guys. There's two studies here that I think are worth looking at about the progress they've made with red light therapy and Parkinson's. That's the first one. Oh, here's the other one. Copy and paste. So what does it give a little bit of information about the red light? Well, the red light therapy, basically, it, um, I had it all in my mind earlier on. It just, just to put it really simply, the red light, there's nerves under your skin, just under your skin, and somehow the red light penetrates the skin and affects the nerves. And I'm not going to try and raise anybody's hopes and dreams like out of the world, like this pro this product is going to cure my Parkinson's, you know, the studies have been 
sufficient enough to, to say that there is some proof that, you know, red light therapy does work for Parkinson's and many other diseases. And moods, too. Yeah, and moods, thank you, honey. With vitamin D? Oh, uh, no, it's a, it's, it's a red light. Yeah. I think it the moves. vitamin D comes from the bright light. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited to try one. And it, one of the studies I read it earlier on, I can't remember exactly what they said now, but probably remember in about 10 or 15 minutes from now. But they said basically that they've been able to measure improvement in people's symptoms. Like they've actually been able to measure from, from when they started on a red light therapy to like up to a year later, they've been able to measure, oh, I'm starting to feel better now. They've been able to measure people's progress and there has been like a measurable effect with the red lights. But I don't think it's enough that people's Parkinson's is going to be reversed or it takes the edge off or go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, having something like something that you don't have to pop a pill is basically my point. A different option. You know, I've, pills don't really work that well for me. And, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm taking You're special. I'm special. <laughs> but yeah with the pills it's nice to have something that skips in, in my opinion you know skips my digestive system because then i don't have to take extra pills that's true which is like why i love the shot okay jerry's saying from my experience with the shock device i use you have to believe in what you are saying i think there's a lot of truth in that I think there's a lot of truth in that. I think there's a lot of truth in that for like supplements and things that don't really. Everyone's different. Yeah, and everybody's everybody's body is different as well. Hi, D. Hello. Thanks for stopping in and saying hello. Oh, hey, cousin Carrie. Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Yes. I can't see the screen who's talking, so I'm yeah. just relying on Dave. Well, I can actually make it up pretty good from this distance, so I'm yeah. pretty happy. Okay. Peter, Peter Pan, so you have to believe. <laughs> that is so true. Let's look at the owl, honey. Oh. <laughs> That's Charlotte from Virginia. Charlotte has a um, Charlotte has a YouTube channel where she basically tries to inspire people with Parkinson's through exercise and positive well that's important positive stuff that's very important yeah so she's got a really good channel going anybody interested in like different stretches or exercises oh that's the one I saw, I found yeah okay. Haley actually found the owl channel so Charlotte and I were able to connect and uh, say hi to each other and yeah, she's got a really good channel going there. If you're interested in some some of that stuff, I'd recommend you. I know exercise has really helped you. Yeah. Greatly. Oh, so Charlotte and Jerry live close together. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, Virginia is a bit far away for us, but. Oh, uh, okay. We're that, <laughs> we're, that's. <laughs> We're neighbor, neighbors by country. There you go. So does anybody have any um, questions about the red lights or anything? Yeah. Charlotte says, looking forward to collaborating on a video soon. Hello, Kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kiwi has to go to bed. She's a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah. Kiwi had to go to bed early. Yeah, I'm looking forward to collaborating too. So yeah, Charlotte would like to do a video together, and I'm excited about that very much. That's so. great. Yes, I'm very excited about That's that. That's really good. Is the red light same as spending time in the sunshine? No, I don't think so. Uh, there's two kind of therapies that they were looking at for. Now I'm I'm able to think again. The meds are kicking in. There's two kind of therapies that they were looking at for. Basically, medical conditions in general. Uh, you know, there was a lot of interest in it in it for Parkinson's. So they had the bright light therapy, which they found basically had no effect. 
And then there's the red light therapy. So I guess I don't know if that's two different spectrums. Charlotte asks, is there any noticeable discomfort or sensation using the red light? No. Uh, there are both the studies I read earlier. There were no side effects or discomfort with the red light therapy. And I'm just going to, I don't know. Charlotte, were you able to find the link? I'll put the link up again. So if anybody is thinking about there we go. Anybody is thinking of purchasing a red light and would like to support the channel, which I would really we all would really appreciate. Here's the link to use. <clears throat> and this takes you to Rogue Care Canada. And I've been talking to um one of the salespeople in the company, Margaret, and they're really excited to to partner with us and to uh, and to sponsor this channel. And I'm very grateful for that. You know, that brings us up to two sponsors, Comfort Linen and Red Light. And it looks pretty interesting, though. It does look cool. Yeah, I can't wait to get a Red Light and <clears throat> and share it with everybody. And it's just going to take a little bit of time. But yeah, the way people are just, you know, coming together in, in the community on YouTube, there's different channels that we're finding here and there. And the Parkinson's community on YouTube is growing, and I'm really excited about that. Just get more awareness of Parkinson's. It's just not an old age yeah. disease. It's, it's more not, younger. It's not an old age disease anymore, and it's not just a men's disease. No, we should all support each other. And mm -hmm. yeah, but same diseases, why not support each other, right? Yeah. Okay, so Jerry asks, can you put it on your channel description in future videos? Yes, absolutely, I will. Uh, once we finish this live stream and finish talking tonight, I am going to put a video update about th about this topic and talk about the red light a little bit more and then talk about what we're going to do for World Parkinson's Day. Carrie asks, what benefits does the red light have? Okay, I'm going to repost... This um, article from that Rogue has. Basically, there's two studies that I was looking at. Scott Johnson, hello from Des Moines, Iowa. Oh, wow. Oh, hey, Scott. Nice to hey, see you. Scott. Yeah, thanks for joining in. My parents used to live in Vancouver. What a wonderful city. Yes, it is yeah. very, very beautiful. We lived a little bit farther north up in Squamish, north of Vancouver. It was very rainy there. How much are, okay, first let's answer Carrie's question about the red lights. The red lights aren't just for Parkinson's. They um, they seem to have found benefits for many other diseases. Life engine. Yeah, wide range. So I'm just going to pop, pop over to Rogue. They have a list of diseases that... that they've been talking about. Okay, so if we go into the search bar and type in Parkinson's... And the study, again, the question is, can red light therapy used to treat Parkinson's disease? And yes, yes, it can. And they can be used to treat a number of different diseases. You want to tell them some examples? Or? Yeah, I'm just trying to find the... Um... Ah, learn. There we go. Hit the learn button. Here we go. How it works. Okay, first discovered in the 1900s, red light was studied by NASA scientists in a research project examining the effects of different light wavelengths on plants and animals with astonishing results. 
The re research has been furthered by teams of doctors and scientists who have since published over 3,000 scientific papers on the benefits, efficacy, and different applications of red light therapy. Yeah, so it's not something new. Is red, red light therapy safe? Yes. Not only are there thousands of peer-reviewed studies demonstrating the effectiveness, pardon me, effectiveness, effectiveness of red light therapy, and what sets it apart from the crowd is its safety profile. In all of the studies conducted on the treatment, the common thread was that the treatment produced no adverse effects, effects which is a big relief to me because sometimes when you think in the winter, and should I go to a tanning bed? You're like, I don't know. <laughs> I always think about Ross on Friends. <laughs> oh. The wavelengths in red light therapy lights are not like the wavelengths in a tanning bed. There we go. There you go. Very step ahead of us. And do not have any of the harmful UV wavelengths. So red light therapy, yet yeah, no harmful UV, UV wavelengths. That's a pretty big thing for me. That's a big mouthful. <laughs> it is a big mouthful. So there's no association with skin cancer and red light therapy. And the web wavelengths do not produce heat and our lamps only emit a gentle warmth that is soothing and enjoyable. So it's sort of like a mood light too. Yeah. So yeah, when you're looking at over 3,000 studies of proof, that's, <coughs> that's quite a bit. And I've seen people jump at like one study. Okay, so here's the science part. With red light therapy, the therapeutic process begins in the mitochondria. I have no idea what that is. I think the break. Maybe. In the modern world, we are exposed to, okay, we're gonna skip that part. Skip that part. I'm waiting to get to the mitochondria. I guess, of course. Okay, so here's something important to mention. The benefits of this are significant, but they don't stop there. The release of nitric oxide is also very advantageous as nitrous oxide acts as a natural, okay, these are going to get some big scientific words here, vasodilator. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. Let's get, we get back to the mitochondria, which I was most interested in. Human cells are densely packed with mitochondria, and good cellular respiration is fundamental to good health. One medical hypothesis holds that the degradation in the quality of the mitochondria through the overaccumulation of free radicals can actually speed up the aging process. Oh, so if you don't want to get older quickly, you need, you need a red light. There you go. Uh, I guess we're all going to be stopped at traffic light. Okay, yeah, so there's a big connection here between anti aging and red light therapy. Oh, okay, it's our daughter calling. Yeah, it's going to run and answer it. Okay, here's what we were hoping to get with. What does red light therapy? I'm just going to see you pop in and see what people are. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's good for acne, too. Don't want more problems. Hey, Jeremy, we're just talking about red light therapy right now. What does your doc think about it? All oh, the docs play stupid and they shy when my shock device is mentioned. <laughs> Maybe they don't want to get shocked. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go through these benefits of red light therapy. Because this was, there we go. What does red light therapy help with? <sighs> Reducing the appearance of wrinkles healing acne, healing wounds, help my, manage fibromyalgia symptoms, reducing the appearance of scars, improving sleep. Ah, there's a big one for me. Firming loose and sagging skin, reducing inflammation, managing arthritis, wow. Reducing joint stiffness, managing peripheral neuropathic pain, promoting hair growth, improving eyesight, wow, cognitive and mental health, Parkinson's disease, arthritis, bone tissue repair, muscle gain, athletic performance, weight loss, cellulite reduction, immune health, hormone health, and libido. So Jeremy, if you need more libido, red light therapy apparently helps with that. Well, this conversation went weird. <laughs> 
shouldn't have left for five minutes. Yeah. So that's basically um, the perspective of the red light. <laughs> Jeremy found that fun. <coughs> so I'll just post that link one more time if new people are here. Um, there we go. So, yeah, I'll be posting this link in a video probably in the next few days. But if you want to support the channel, use this link, and that will take you to Rogue Care, and they can get you set up with a red light. Uh, yeah, so you can get the red lights. Carrie's asking, is it a big unit like a tanning bed? So there are, are many different sizes and shapes. And options. And options. There's tons of options for the red lights. All different kinds. Depends where your how small your place is or how big your place is, I guess. Yeah, when you go to dicks. when you go to the website and you see this person lying in a bed, you don't have to get one that big. I mean that's a massive red light. That's huge. So, yeah, well, I, I don't probably want to take up your whole room. <laughs> I bet you could use it as a tax rate of rent. That's interesting. Oh. Does red light help with schizophrenia? I've got PD and schizoaffective disorder. Yeah. So there were many different things that they. Here we go. Um, they didn't specifically have schizophrenia on the list there. They said it helps improve cognitive and mental health. I think that would be close enough. Improving sleep, reducing inflammation, managing peripheral neuropathic pain. I don't know if that has anything to do with schizophrenia. Of course, cognitive and me mental health, managing Parkinson's symptoms, uh, athletic performance, immune health, hormone health. So they didn't specifically have schizophrenia on there. Do you need a prescription? No, I don't believe you need a prescription. No, it doesn't look like it. No, and tax write-off? I, I would I would go for it. Yeah, that's the first thing I would do. I would definitely go for it. If you can get a doctor's note, you there's you might be able to get it covered under on your tax return. And Scott says mental health probably covers it. Yeah, I would think so. Oh, it should be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cost. Jerry says cost. Okay, so there's all different models of lights. Leave that one open. We'll go to the shop. All products. Red light therapy products. <clears throat> okay, so basically we've got a tabletop model here starting at 750. We've got a Rogue Pro G3 starting at 1600. A Rogue G3 Max starting at 3000 and a Rogue Ultimate G3 starting at 6. I would probably say that most people would be probably fine with a tabletop model. Yeah. I would think so. Okay. And they've got a Rogue Nano portable red light therapy panel for 340 These are all Canadian prices. And then they have different shelves. There's stands and... They even have a therapy bed. So I would say a big lot of options, isn't there? Rogue wow. Bliss Red Light Therapy Bed. That's the one I want for thirty three thousand dollars. Of course you do. I would say that's probably like someone with a professional business, right? Yeah, more Yeah. This in the uh, spas. Mm hmm Yeah, I wish I could share my screen with you guys, but I don't think that's possible. <sighs> Of course, we'll have this all all in an upcoming video. That's me, cheap, cheap. <laughs> yeah, me too. 
If I don't have to spend money, I try not to. <clears throat> okay, any um, any more questions about the red lights? I think I'm just grateful they're coming on as a sponsor for this channel and they're willing to help support us and give us the opportunity to give some of you guys. Definitely going to check it out. Awesome. And if anybody does order one, I would be very curious about your, how it works. Yeah, definitely how it works for you. And if there's any any benefits, like like we said, uh, there's 3,000 studies pointing to the this being effective to at least help, right? You know, it's, that's the thing with Parkinson's. It's hard to find something that actually you can actually measure that actually helps you. It's, it's definitely not always easy. No. <clears throat> okay, let's um, let's talk about uh, World Parkinson's Day. World Parkinson's Day is coming up on April eleventh, twenty twenty three. I can't believe that's twenty twenty three. Yeah, I know it's twenty twenty three already. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Scott. Scott said, I've used your other vids and found them helpful. Well, thank you very much. We're, we're planning some more stuff in the near future. It's definitely been very busy, very busy behind the scenes. So there's, yeah, there's more stuff coming up that's going to be exciting. And definitely excited about World Parkinson's Day. I wonder what we do. World Parkinson's yeah, Day? Yeah, what do that what kind of stuff do they do you look it up or Well what we're gonna do is we're giving everybody in the audience the chance to send in a video about about their situation and or you don't have to do a video, you can send an email if you want. Basically the question oh I got it on my phone. I wanna wanna make sure I ask it right. Question, question, question. So Michelle from Slow Dancing with Parkinson's helped pare down this question because it was quite broad and then we had to get it more specific. More specific, yeah. more specific. Basically, the question that we're asking everybody is, how has Parkinson's affected your life? Well, that's a good one. Yeah, so how has Parkinson's affected your life? Dean. Yeah. Some dermatologists online talk about using red light. Excellent. Oh. If the skin doctors think it's good for you, I would say that there's a good chance that it is. So, yeah. So, we're asking the question, how has Parkinson's affected your life? And we're suggesting that people, if they want to, submit a one to two minute video about that. If you want it to be anonymous, you can submit an email. Can email me and I'm gonna put the email or Facebook video. Um no no, I no I'd like everything to come through the email so it's all oh, in one, okay. so it's all in one place. If it's here there and everywhere it's just gonna I think that's a good way of doing it. Scattered it'll be difficult to mm -hmm. piece together. So this is the email of course, it's still going in a video as well, but this is the email to send your submissions to. So you can send a one to two minute video about how Parkinson's has affected your life, or you can just send an email and we can read it out or put it on the screen. Whatever you're comfortable. Yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. And make sure you let, if you do send an email, make sure you let us know if we if you want your name in there or not. And that's fine. If people want to remain anonymous, I have no problem with that. So that's basically three options, a one to two minute video. The hi Dave, hi D. Hi D. So oh. what would your video look like? How it fits? Oh how my goodness. <laughs> I think about just only having two minutes and I just panic. <laughs> that's the thing though, if we get 30 to 40 people submitting, yeah, it's gonna... More infection. More back on it. Well, it's just it's just gonna get long. Yeah. <coughs> uh, 
I want to give everyone the chance to, you know, talk about talk about what's on their mind. Yeah, very wide range of different people have different symptoms. Yeah, so you can um, you can be a, a person with Parkinson's, a caregiver, a caregiver with yeah, a caregiver of someone with Parkinson's, um, a, a relative. And, yeah. Or you can be someone who's caught in a misdiagnosis situation. I know there's a couple of people out there that they're still struggling to get a diagnosis. And, and we understand that too, because I, they weren't sure about me for a while. And yeah, I, I went to the monthly meeting at UBC. Yeah. yeah. Scott says, I was just diagnosed in 2022, so symptoms aren't real bad yet. Good to learn from you, PD veterans. Well, yeah, you know, Scott, you can send in a video too about how how it's just being diagnosed. Wow, just pretty much a year ago. It's fresh. Yeah. It's a new kind of, Trevor says, it's a new kind of caregiving for me. Knowing someone who is on such a strict schedule is a new thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I go to Trevor's house, he, as soon as I get out of the car, he's like, go to bed, have a nap. We like going to Trevor's house. Yeah. I get very excited. Yeah, he's a good friend. He's a very good friend. It's nice. I'm able to, he's got your back. Yeah. Yeah, so Jerry said you could use those videos for your intro to future videos too. Yeah. Oh, that, that, yeah. That's a very good point. Uh, that's a very really good idea. But uh, what I'd like to do on World Parkinson's Day is to have this video ready. And then on April 11th, um, even if we have to get up really early in the morning, we'll try and pick a, pick a time that works for as many time zones as possible because I don't know where people are going to submit from. So if I got to get up at like five or six in the morning one day, that's fine. We'll do that. But the plan is, is they have a, a world preview thing where you can schedule a video at a certain time. I have to, here he says, I have to sign off at 6.15. Yeah, no problem, Karen. Good luck at Kendra's basketball game. But yeah, so basically, I'm I'm hoping this all works out. We it's our first year. Yeah, so basically the cutoff day is going to be March the fifteenth, so it's going to be a hard stop. Yeah, that should be plenty of time for people to get in their submissions. And that, that'll give us nearly about 30 days to put the video all together. So it depends how many people want to take part. Yeah, it depends how many people, people want to take part. So, yeah, we can schedule like a world preview. So it, it would kind of be the same setup as this. There would be a chat bar on the one side, and then the video would play in, in the center of the screen. And then we can all chat with each other and watch the video and talk about you know, everyone's different stories, which is really going to be very interesting. Everyone's going to have a different um, even outlook. Yeah, a different outlook. They feel. Yeah, and I think that's uh, you know that's very important. It, it'll be good to hear from everybody, everybody's comments and thoughts, and and how they're doing, all at different stages in in the Parkinson's journey. Yeah. Well, we've never gone to one, but um, we definitely went to our daughter's type 1 diabetic one. So I wonder if it's the same block kind of thing. Oh, I'm curious. Oh, World Parkinson's Day. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah we kind of missed it last year. Yeah. I believe it was the same date, April 11th. We were just a little bit behind the ball, but this year we're organized. It's January, so we've got three more months to World Parkinson's Day. It's January the uh, 13th. Yeah, Friday the 13th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so any any thoughts or questions or comments out there? What do you guys think? What's your thoughts on the, uh, on the video idea?
big fundraising event. Yeah, that's going to be, that's going to, we're hoping to bring that out next month, the fundraising partnership that we're, we're starting. There's many different ideas. Yeah, it's uh, got to make sure it's all going to work first. <clears throat> so we're getting, we're getting close to being able to announce it, but still a little bit more work to do. But yeah, it's very, it's, <laughs> sounds like a challenge with the video. We'll find something. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think it'll be that bad. Like if there's 20 or 30 people that put in, if we make a movie, what format? Ah, that's why we need Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> It would be best if you're using your phone to, and thanks for asking this question, Trevor. YouTube film basically presents in this format. TikTok and shorts are this format. So for YouTube, best to film your video with your phone horizontal, because that's what I would assume most people would would film it. If everybody doesn't do it, it's probably okay, but it, it would look a lot better if everybody filmed this way. That gives us a chance to get to know people a little bit more too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'd say one to two minutes. Just basically pick your the biggest way Parkinson's has affected your life or someone that you're close to. When I think about that, it's just. Yeah, you're on the spot now. I guess some of the really big days would be diagnosis day, right? When you're sitting there and, uh, well, for me, our, our neurologist came up on a Sunday. Scott says, is it hard to care for a pet with Parkinson's? I'm thinking about getting a cat. <laughs> okay, we've actually been having, that's a great question, Scott. We've actually been having some trouble with our bird, Kiwi, our conure, unfortunately. And I'm wearing my... Do it straight there. There we go. A good day starts with coffee and a conure because we love our little bird. We've had her for, she's almost five. Almost five years. Almost five, five years, years yeah. I think it's May or June this year. It's going to be five years. Yeah. And as the Parkinson's is progressing, it's actually becoming much more difficult to, for me, to in, interact with the bird because we, yeah, we just had a vet appointment yeah. and Haley, Haley took Kiwi to the vet and she asked the vet, like, what is going on? Why can't my husband still have the same bond with our conure. And well, he's like, well, with Parkinson's, your, your appearance changes quite a bit from time to time. So she's more than likely getting scared of, of Dave. As the move, movement, movements and the yeah, the birds don't like that kind of stuff. Yeah, birds don't like sudden movements and birds don't like dyskinesia, especially when it's intense. So yeah, unfortunately, she's been biting me a lot more lately, and uh, I get more love stuff. So. Yeah, one of the big times of the day is is my four o'clock or four thirty off time is one of the times of the day that I get bit quite often, and yeah, it's actually kind of making me pretty sad. We caught her for you too, to well, help with your anxiety and all that. Yeah, and it was it was great. I'd say it's just been the last three to four months. I must have. I must have taken a progression step the last few months. So, yeah, unfortunately. And birds can feel emotions. Yeah, and she's really smart. Like, she's a very smart bird. She can say all sorts of different words, crystal clear. And yeah, she's smart. Yeah. And she's just confused. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, my day is like this on, off, on, off. On, off. So, and she likes to walk around the house, and that's hard for you when you're off. Yeah. You lost your stepping or something like that. You're scared to walk 
around. Yeah, she likes to move around a lot, and she likes her independence, and I'm getting terrified that I'm going to step on her. Yeah, she's just a little bird, right? Yeah, she, she little bird, but big bite. Yeah, she can fit into my hand, basically fit it into one hand. But yeah, her intelligence level is probably that of a seven or eight year old. We don't want to get rid of her. No. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we well, might have to revisit that if we can't figure something out. So yeah, sorry, Scott. Um, to rain on your prey a little bit, but cats are different than birds, right? Cats are quite a bit different. A bird is a reptile; it's a predator. Cats, um, probably, you know, cats are. I grew up with cats, so cats are probably more emotional sensitive there we go emotionally sensitive than birds birds like it their way or the highway and that's the way it's going to be and they don't feel guilt <laughs> nope you know when kiwi bites me and we tell her no and stuff she's just like da, 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 da. Right? <laughs> there's no guilt oh so you're saying when you're going to your parkinson's appointment Oh, okay, yeah, getting, yeah, neurologist. Yeah, getting back to the, um, the video. Yeah, some big days that stand out for me would be uh, diagnosis day when the doctor was saying Parkinsonism, Parkinsonism, Parkinsonism. That, um, yeah, turned my world upside down. <laughs> Jerry said, forgive my humor. Oh, gee. GK, hi, I'm Glenn and 55 years old. And I had to stop working in November. I have a hard time with my grandson. He doesn't understand. I can't move that good or pick him up. <coughs> Hi, GK. Thank you for stopping in and saying hello. Hi. Yeah, we're really, really glad you did. 55 years old. So six years older than me. I had to stop working in November. Okay, so you've probably had been diagnosed for a little while if you just stopped working. And I have a hard time with my grandson. How old is your grandson? I can't move that good or pick him up. So you must be having some medium, at least medium symptoms, if you're having a hard time picking him up or move that good. So you must I'm be sorry, having. Sorry, I bet that's really hard on you. Yeah. Here. Yeah. That's a hard one. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have grandchildren yet, but um, we definitely, and there's probably a lot of people here that definitely understand what you're going through. If anybody wants to speak to, to Glenn's comment, you know, please do. Charlotte from the Owl says, thank you for sharing the info. Yeah, no problem. I hope you submit a video, Charlotte. That would be fantastic. Another big day for me would be, um, yeah, the, the day I stopped working. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. My last day at work. Well, my last day at full-time work at the, at the garage store company. That was a big day. Di GK says, diagnosis in 2015, grandson is four. Yeah, that would be, that would be hard. But, you know, when we took Zach and Leash to see your, your grandparents. Yeah, they... They did learn. Oh yeah, they do. They, our kids grew up in the hilltop, and they know like you shouldn't have things on the floor, or you just sort of get around it. You get they get used to it. It's like okay, instead of running because you can't run, you can walk a little bit faster. But they're more aware, definitely aware. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think the kids the kids will learn. Yeah. When they're more around it, mm -hmm. they were really good, but they knew definitely not to put anything on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have a good night, Carrie. Good night, Carrie. You can, Archie, you can get in the habit of getting them to help you pick things up or help you bring, if you're in that time, 
and yeah, get yeah, involved. Mm -hmm. I am involved. Yeah, that's a tough one. We're looking forward to grandchildren as well, but yeah. We're not ready yet, though. No, we're not ready. <laughs> <laughs> we're not ready yet. No. <clears throat> not even close. So you're saying about the day you got diagnosed? Yeah. So, yeah, the day I stopped working was definitely a. Yeah, that was a tough day. My last day at Diamond Head Door was uh, was definitely a tough day. I remember it pretty vividly. Oh, Topper. Topper. Hi, folks. In five years, still working slowly at 67 years old, about 50 hours a week. Wow, that is that, impressive. That is really impressive. Wow. <laughs> Sounds like me, Topper. <laughs> I was working 40 to 60 hours a week for many years as well. But, um, yeah, my last day of work was full-time work at the garage door company was March 28th, 2019, just when basically COVID hit. Yeah, we really got out of that one. COVID. Yeah, COVID was uh, a nasty thing for many different people. But good for us. It, the timing of COVID just co coincidentally timed with leaving my job and timed with moving it, for us it was just coincidentally fortunate and i wouldn't want to say COVID was a good time for anybody no no definitely not no but it did push you out mm -hmm. of the job yeah so that eased you out of it a little easily mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my last full time day. That was a tough day handing my phone in. Oh my goodness, I had had that phone number for 14 years. Yeah. Bringing my phone to the office, that was a. But your people, your employees were wonderful. They were great. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it was a great company and I loved. What date would you. Okay, Charlotte's asking, what date would you like our submissions by? Okay, I'm going to post the email address again since you're asking that. <coughs> I'm going to grab this email address. Copy. Paste. So it's a day, bro. April 11th is World yeah, Parkinson's so Day. I guess March. Yeah, March 15th, I'm going to say, is the hard stop. That'd be the cutoff. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to say March 15th, hard stop. Uh, preferably March 11th, everybody gets their submissions in. But uh, March 15th will give us nearly 30 days to organize the video, uh, produce it, and get it done, and get it ready. If there's, you know, hopefully there, well, yeah, if there's a large number of people, it's going to, it's going to need some time and it's going to need some editing. So March 15th will be. We still have some time. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. yeah it's January the 13th. So that's um, just a little bit over 60 days for people to get their videos in or their emails, whatever they prefer. But please send it to David's life with Parkinson's at gmail.com. So then everything goes to the same spot. Hashtag Parkinson's looks like me. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, the, how has Parkinson's affected? Yeah, and the question is, how has Parkinson's affected your life? What what would you, if someone came up to you and asked, what what, what would be the, the biggest thing that's affected your life? What, what do you think, baby, for you? Well, for me, it's been good for me to get a little bit more out, more, Opened me up quite a bit, mm -hmm. actually, to make me talk more and be more aware for you, and that would be my priority. Mm -hmm. So it's been good, but it also been hard because there's more watching you mm -hmm. than before. Because 
more and more cautious. Mm-hmm. And it takes a little bit more time, but more, I'm concerned about you more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, than before. Yeah. yeah. How about you? Yeah, the second biggest one, the second big one was, yeah, stopping working full time, definitely. Oh, yeah, that's been different. Mm hmm. That's different. And I think yeah, another another big one would be um, having problems with my eyesight and stress. That's been. Yeah, the doctors keep saying you got to avoid stress. <laughs> I have to avoid stress and steroids. Those are the two big things that are bad for your eyes when you have Parkinson's. <laughs> stress and steroids. So oh. we just laugh. Yeah. I mean, what else can you do? But also, it's it's a good. Parkinson's it's been good, but bad at the same time. Yeah. Not bad, just because we're used to condition medical conditions, we're just adapted. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why. Yeah. We're just not used to you not working. Yeah. That's been the hardest. Yeah, being home more has definitely been a big adjustment. <clears throat> something, yeah, something I'm... You work in many hours and then nothing, it's sort of... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been hard, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the eyesight issue, yeah, that was... That, that was kind of scary. But we also have good support. Mm-hmm. Oh, we get good support system. Yeah. And the other one, if I'm to think about it, the other one would be the the heart murmur. That was a big shock. Mm-hmm. Definitely a big shock. Yeah, the heart murmur. Oh my goodness, with Parkinson's, it's just like you've got a list of symptoms that's a mile long. It makes sense because your muscles and your heart slow down, so your body slows down, mm-hmm. so it makes sense. But everyone's different. Mm-hmm. Everyone doesn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone's for a wide range yeah. of different symptoms. Doesn't mean everyone will have heart issues. Mm-hmm. That's true. He says, check out studies of the good effects of cold, cold showers on PD. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Being cold all the time. Like, we love when Dave goes to have a nap. Me and, Leisha, me and Kiwi, sorry, get the, like, the fireplace on and we all get warmed up. <laughs> we love it. And on Wednesday when Dave goes to work, we have the fireplace in the all day. Love it. Love it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I, I walk around the house with, like, shorts and a T-shirt, and Haley's, like, bundled up and has a blanket, and Kiwi's, like, brr, cold. <laughs> that's, what, that's what our little country does. She goes, brr, cold. Or if you take her outside, she goes, brr, windy. Yeah, she's not a weatherly. Yeah, she's an indoor. So we like that Dave goes to have a nap at 1 o'clock. Yeah. That's my main Kiwi's time. Yeah, at work I do it, too. So I'd be like, oh, it's hot in here. And they're like, you're only wearing a t-shirt, dude? <laughs> yeah, I just work. I just go to work one day a week at the used car dealership. And they've got these basically like caravans. And they've got the heat going. And I'm like basically down to like the thinnest pants I can get and a t-shirt. And they're still wearing their sweaters and coats inside the trailers. And I'm like, guys, it's hot in here. Can I open the door? Even Grandma and Granddad are getting like their vest on now. And yeah. keeping their winter vests on. Yeah. So <laughs> they're ready. Yeah. Okay. Topper is asking David, are you still driving? Any problems with that? Yeah, I can have a drink of water. That's a good idea. Oh, here we There's go. There's only peach. This is a cup for three people. <laughs> and what was the question? Are you still driving? Any problems with that? Yes, I'm still driving. Although driving is getting very difficult. Especially when he's off. Yeah. 
uh, driving at night, I can't do. I just can't do that anymore. Driving in the dark, I have trouble seeing the road lines, <coughs> and my reaction time is much slower than it used to be. So you're restricted to what times you go out? Yeah, uh, I, I'll drive around here in the dark because I know the roads, but I won't go like very far. Like maybe I'll run down to Timmy's or just over to the grocery store when it's dark, but like nowhere else. I won't go on the highway. Yeah, and you don't change different roads anyhow. You don't change keep the routine. Mm -hmm. Same routine. Yeah, and I try and drive to like the same spot every time. Like if we're going to Superstore or Walmart, wherever we're going, I try and, the and park. Same park install. <laughs> I try and park in the same spot every time just so I know where the car is. I don't have to think about it. Oh, gosh, where did I park this car? <laughs> and one time uh, we did, well, it was uh, we were having a bad day, so. <coughs> oh, it's Felicia. Felicia, hello. Great live stream, Mom and Dad. Nice. Thank you. Our baby girl is on it. Our baby girl is on. <laughs> Topper said, I saw a bumper sticker. My driving scares me, too. <laughs> yeah, I try and drive in the... What I usually do when I ask for a ride or anything, I ask if he's off before I ask, like... I know his schedule really well now. I sort of plan my day around if I go out or mm -hmm. whatever. Or my parents pick me up and drive me somewhere, but like go for an outing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's I try to keep to the same schedule, same place, same everything. Yeah, and driving, <clears throat> and you know, and driving, you know, I don't want to have an, uh, you know. I'm, have an accident or hurt somebody else or like rear end somebody. So yeah, right now I only drive in the day and I only drive when I'm like well medicated and I know I'm on and I don't have anxiety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And only go to certain stores that you're yeah. comfortable with. Yeah. And yeah, in the same spot, park in the same spot. So unfortunately Parkinson's comes with a, good dose of anxiety for a lot of people and uh, as scott says i just don't i don't drive i just uber everywhere uber Ooh, uber, uber. uber. that's from gilmore girls yeah yeah there's a gilmore girls episode with kirk's going uber it's different than uber yeah it is. yeah oh and shopping we have to go in the same aisle like we can't go off kilter because it throws him off I know it's that too with Parkinson's. Yeah, routine. Yeah. Don't mess with lack of routine. <laughs> Trevor says that's why you parked so close to the trailer. <laughs> no, it's so I can plug the car in. It is, it. Trevor. It is. It's so I can plug the car in. It's not true. Jerry said, traffic is fun with anxiety. Yeah, so Parkinson's comes with anxiety and um, some depth perception issues. And I think that's what the problem is. Like when there's, like, like it's rush hour traffic and there's lots of cars around and you're trying to push the brake pedal, push the gas pedal, push the brake pedal. Those are really difficult times as well. And look at cars at the same time. Yeah, and keeping track of all the different cars, it's really, it's really difficult with the um, depth perception issue that Parkinson's have brings on so we know now we know when to go not to go and, yeah 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 so we sort of go around our life for Parkinson's a bit mm -hmm. it's good peach tea so. yeah but like Scott said taking the uber everywhere yeah we've definitely thought about that Probably a little bit nicer than taxis. And then Jerry saying, "Had have you tested for driving? There are PD through physical therapy. Have you had the test for driving? Do you like riding in the passenger seat in BC? <laughs> in BC, like when I went to see my family doctor and I had to renew my driver's license, I had to do uh, basically a medical exam." <laughs> 
which was basically just the doctor filling out a form saying that I'm getting medicated for Parkinson's and that that was it in British Columbia there's no restrictions there's no there's no restrictions and they don't put um, anything on your license plate saying you've got Parkinson's so what we did for Dave is we found um, a bumper sticker mm -hmm. and we put it on his um, car on that one but the I'm sure you put have it on your license information nope. or something no it's not on my driver's license it's just on my driving driving history that's what yeah yeah history yeah but there's no no restrictions at all for Parkinson's so yeah basically if you've got Parkinson's and you live in Canada BC you're good to drive whenever you want yeah they're free willy-nilly yeah yeah but you can always get a bumper sticker just to, yeah so you don't have to worry as much yeah, I'm curious as do you like riding the passenger seat yes I do <laughs> uh, I am more than happy at this point in my life to be a passenger. Your father-in-law drives. We get to be a passenger. Yeah. Yes, he does. So. I, Scott says I sit at the back like I'm being chauffeured. Well, that's a really good idea. Yeah, I don't mind sitting in the back seat either. It's just as long as I don't have to drive the long distances, I'm okay. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. And Charlotte says, our grandson is two and a half. He sees my tremor and will copy it. I haven't decided if it's cute or sad. Well, that's sweet. So, someone else said, um, they're... Jeremy. Jeremy's son yeah. imitates what he does yeah. too. That's kind of, he thinks it's kind of cute. Except when he says, I can't do that because I'm too sore. <laughs> I can't get up. Oh, it's um... Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, hopefully our daughter doesn't do that. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't do that. <laughs> she just laughs at us. Mm -hmm. Jerry says, there, uh, he's talking about the driving test. Uh, this is some computer simulation that they hook you up to. More affiliated with the driver's license. Oh, okay. That, I would find that difficult. We mean being, like, being hooked up to a driving simulation, I would find that very difficult. Like I can't really play video games anymore. No, you can't get it. No, so I would find that very difficult. Dee's asking, does anyone use deep massage? Oh yeah, I miss my massages. <clears throat> we had this massage therapist in Squamish. What was her name? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Betty. <laughs> Zoe. Zoe and and um, and Shannon. Yeah. Yeah. Zoe, yeah, she's basically the one who gave me most of my exercises. And she knew a lot. Yeah. About Parkinson's and studied. Yeah, because she worked in England at uh, at a Parkinson's. Um, what was it? A, like a care facility. Yeah, or... it's like a care, like uh, a manor. Yeah, like a care facility or... Yeah, living assistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there was Shannon. She would come to the house and bring her bed and everything. And she was more of a physiotherapist, but she did a lot of massage. It was good at the time that you were having anxiety and you wouldn't go out kind of thing. Yeah, you know, the anxiety was bad at that time. I couldn't go out very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the... Um, basically... For me, I think the deep massage therapy was really good. The problem I have, though, is I've got a bit, bit of dystonia developing in my neck, so it, it'll go away for, like, maybe a day or two, but then it'll just clench right back up, and it just it just stays there every day. So basically every day when I get up, I do, you know, a bunch of... Yeah, you always look on the left. Was it right, left? No, turning to the right is harder. Yeah. Because I'm blocked on the right. So yeah, basically every morning I just I, I got to get up and do exercises or if I don't then I can't move. Jerry, I am the backseat driver. And Scott says about the deep massage, I wish the effects would last longer. Yeah, that's the problem I had. The effects would last a day or two and then just go back to what it was. And I think that's just the um the bit of, well, yeah, my doctor you know, the neurologist did basically told me it's just a bit of dystonia developing in the neck. <clears throat> Owl. 
I think COVID made it harder on those of us diagnosed during that period because we're not been able to allow to meet others in person to share in our journey. Yes. That's, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, we struggled with that because we couldn't go to support groups. We couldn't talk to people. And basically that's been the one great thing about having this channel is just being able to develop a bit of a community. <laughs> but sorry to interrupt you, but there is a caregiver um, support group. I recommend highly to go. It has made a difference, a lot difference, because they're a lot older than I am. But they've been there all, all the way. And I recommend a good caregiver. There is some out there. Depends mm. where you are, but yeah, I haven't gone recently, but yeah, for different reasons. But um, yeah, I recommend caregivers. Mm -hmm. You totally under it's hard to hear, it, but you also you, when you hear it, you're not when it happens like oh okay I know this, mm -hmm. this is what's going to happen because it helped me it helped hearing other caregivers talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big outing. Yeah, you get to go for the day. <laughs> and I get to stay home alone with Kiwi. <coughs> and on my side, caregiving is could be really you gotta learn your limit on if you're feeling overwhelmed, you gotta express that to your people. I know it's hard for the other people to um, something to understand, but we also need some. The other day, I felt very overwhelmed because mm -hmm. you're caring for yourself, caring for your kids, or whatever. And it can get overwhelming, and sometimes Parkinson's motions come out with yourself too. So you're you're helping the other person that has Parkinson's. But you're not focusing on yourself. Mm -hmm. But so you do get burnt out. Yeah. What I do, I color. I go in my room and color just to absorb and yeah. So I noticed now you need a little bit more attention. Mm -hmm. or, I don't know. So. Well, yeah, the uh, yeah, the longer the Parkinson's goes on, the worse the anxiety gets. So. Yeah. That's that's the big thing with me is I <clears throat> that's my biggest that's been my biggest symptom since day one is the anxiety. Yeah. Now, okay, there's there's my part of the video. There's my two minutes of the video is um, the anxiety. How has Parkinson's affected my life? The biggest consistent symptom for the whole time is the anxiety. Yeah, I'm reassuring you. Mm hmm. Definitely. Yeah, because sometimes I'll think there's something wrong when there's not something wrong, and that's the hardest part of, of the anxiety. Yeah. Is not being, like if I'm having a bad off, like I was at the beginning of this live stream, I might start to think that there was something wrong, or I did something wrong, or like there was some sort of problem that, yeah. we, had, that we had to deal with, and that's... That's the biggest. Yeah, you just you have to stay strong and confident and reassure that person over and over again as much as they can. This is perfect. This is what you need to do. Or just reassure them that you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Trevor says, when Dave comes out to the trailer, he gets so relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> That's because I don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> we don't worry when he owns Trevor's. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so D asked, "What helps in the kitchen?" What helps in the kitchen? Huh. Okay, well, this is something we've been looking into quite a bit. The biggest thing that helps in the kitchen right now is that um, I don't have to go shopping as much anymore. We order in HelloFresh, yeah, and that's where I get the majority of my my meals is HelloFresh. Number one, because they come right to the door. Number two, because they have fantastic recipes and they only sell you what you need. So, like when we used to go shopping after after our kids moved out, we would waste a lot of food because we were like 
You what our daughter would say, we have nothing in the fridge. <laughs> nothing in the fridge now. <laughs> Except these paper bags of Hello Fresh. It's just. Yeah, you can read, up, like, well, you like to keep track of the, your list, what you need to do. Yeah. Your instructions. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't like to go shopping as much because that's one of the places that produces a lot of anxiety is because. And I'm not putting down any, I'm not picking on any stores or anything, but Superstore is very hard to navigate because they people are, like, they run and bump into you, and it's, if you're having a bit of an off at Superstore, you, you get knocked around. And Walmart's probably a little bit better, but... It's a little bit more spacey. It's a little bit more spaced out, but the food section is very small. It's like three quarters of, of retail. And well, one what I'm doing is I've actually been grocery shopping when my mom and dad picked me up. And I go grocery shopping with them, and it gives me a break. And so he doesn't have to do any really much shopping. Yeah. So that's why he likes HelloFresh. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, uh, uh, and I made a video about this, but I, I messed up the filming. This was shortly before Christmas, which was a very stressful time for us. So my HelloFresh video has been delayed. <laughs> Half the footage I didn't have ahead, so I thought I probably shouldn't post that. No. So, yeah, I would say. And uh, you choosing what you struggle with, you choosing what to eat, mm -hmm. making a schedule on what you want to eat, and trying to make different options. Yeah, so that's the other advantage is that they send you five different meal bags, uh, and it's five very distinct, very different meals, and I'm I'm. I'm someone who can almost eat anything, so it's nice not to have to worry about choosing what to eat. I highly recommend the burgers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The burgers are good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The burgers are really good. So it's, there's some things that we more aware, mm -hmm. and the progression is we try our best. It's all you can do. Yeah. I'm just reading the comments here. Charlotte was diagnosed in March 2021. She's 53. Jerry, Jerry I will be 52 on 316. Dave reminded me tonight, 16 more days. <laughs> And Trevor says, when Dave comes to my place, he brings hello fresh to leftover bags. They are always good product. Thank you, Trevor. I'm actually saving a lot of the spices I haven't used, so I'm bringing up. We have garlic. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Debbie just got home. Hi, Debbie. So you missed out on things. That's okay. We can do a quick recap. Yep. Our new sponsor is... Da, 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 da. We've just been chit-chatting. Yeah, we've just been chit-chatting, so I'm happy to recover this ground. So the new sponsor of our channel is... Whoops. What are you doing? Rogue Light Canada, red light therapy products. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> That's the right link, isn't it? <coughs> Oh, no, that's the wrong link. Silly me. Maybe that's not the link to use, Debbie. There it is. I was going to say copy the other one that you did. I'm going to close off the other one I clicked on. This is the right link to... There we go. Road Light Canada is our new sponsor. They're a red light therapy company. They produce many different red light therapy products and... They have been shown through studies to help manage Parkinson's symptoms as well as numerous other conditions. So we're really excited about Reg Rogue Canada coming on as a sponsor. Partying. Partying. Yeah, partnering with us too. So if anybody's interested in a red light therapy product, there's an opportunity there to indirectly support the channel. And in the future, I will be getting a red light and documenting how it works yeah so yeah we're going to make a video after this about the red light product so 
there will be more information coming out about it later. So it's it's very exciting, Debbie. Very exciting. And the partner, and then talk about the walk. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. So what we're also ta been talking about in this video is the World Parkinson's Day celebration on April 11th. So I'm just we're just giving everybody the opportunity to submit like a one to two minute video and answer the question, how has Parkinson's affected your life? It doesn't have to be a video. You can send an email. If you want to remain anonymous, let me know. So, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. Just basically any everyone on the channel getting the opportunity to say how has Parkinson's affected their lives. So it, it can be a caregiver. A person with Parkinson's, a person who's family like, member. yeah, a family member, or a person who's struggling getting a diagnosis. I know there's some people out there who watch that are not sure if they have Parkinson's or not. But you've got time. You got time. Yeah, you've got time. The cutoff right. date. The cutoff date is going to be March the fifteenth, and I will give you. And we're thinking like eleventh, weren't we talking? Well, April 11th is World Parkinson's Day. March, sorry, March. Yeah, so we're yeah. thinking March 15th is the cutoff for submissions. Hopefully you can get everyone in by, the, like, the 11th. Yeah, 11th of March would be nice, yeah. and we'd have 30 days. Yeah. <clears throat> and there is email to, if you would like, to send your submission to. And, yeah. How has Parkinson's affected your life? So, yeah, this broadcast, we've been talking about the new sponsor, the Red Light Therapy products. The walk. Yeah, the walk. And then what we're going to do for World Parkinson's Day. So hopefully on April 11th, we're going to pick a time that fits as many time zones as possible. And that's when we're going to broadcast a new video. And hopefully we can all watch it to Hopefully as many people as possible can get to watch it together. So we'll pick a time like... I don't know, six in the morning. We'll we'll figure it out later on. And we've been talking about like what how Parkinson's affect us. Yeah. Yeah, and our daughter. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is the update. And T just put an interesting comment here. My PD friend just got a new heart valve. He's doing great with it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's great. That's what I'm waiting for as well. I've got a heart murmur that is painful at times. And I'm really looking forward <laughs> to seeing a cardiologist as soon as possible. And your deep brain stimulation. Yeah, and I'm on the deep brain stimulation wait list as well. So hopefully the heart surgery comes before the deep brain stimulation. It probably will. Or the combine, maybe. Do it all at once? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if they can do that. Work on your heart and your brain at the same time? I don't think... Grace Anatomy can do it. <laughs> yeah, Grace Anatomy can do it. They can do anything. You definitely want to be on an episode of Grey's Anatomy. They do it fast. Mm -hmm. Jerry says, me too, as I quit SIGs for heart. Got a need for sugar nightly. Yeah, I bet. That, that's going to be hard. What's that? Jerry had to quit cigarettes as well, too. That must have been really hard. Oh. Yeah, yeah I never thought of that. Yeah. And Charlotte's saying, I have layers and layers on in the winter and still feel cold. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. For me, I'm like a like a fireplace. I get hot all the time. So women are a little bit different from men, how they work. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Well, you may have. Women may not have. Mm -hmm. That we never thought of. Yeah. <coughs> so does anybody have any questions or thoughts or things they want to bring up any questions there's definitely been a lot of good questions tonight there has been this, has been, this been. has been a really good broadcast yeah I'm just going to check my phone. Okay. Oh, Topper has a question. Yay! 
Yeah, I covered everything on the phone. Okay. Do you, you take C, question for anyone, do you take CL before going to bed? Pill, you know, just regular pills. Carb it open, leave it open. Yes, I do. I do. I take half of a quick well, standard release and then a full one of a extended release. Just Jerry, just listening and enjoying Dave. Well, thank you, Jerry. That's very nice. So, yeah, Topper, I, I need to take some CL before I go to bed or I can't sleep. Um, I have a nighttime bedtime con talk, concoction. I take cocktail, a... Cocktail, you call yeah, it? Yeah, I call it a sleep cocktail. I take uh, harp seal oil. I take a magnesium. I take a melatonin, I take a clonazepam, and then I take some quick release cinnamon. I just I just call it cinnamon, and then an extended release cinnamon. Or yeah, or I can't get through the night. And I usually average about seven, anywhere from six and a half to a seven and a half, usually more yeah. like seven hours of sleep. And I don't wake up to go pee every night, but I'd say half the night, half the nights I do. <clears throat> yeah, I need my sleep cocktail. Yeah, you like a cocktail. Yeah, it's like oh, bad. Oh, sleep cocktail. <laughs> Scott says, "What about cutting out caffeine and sugar? That seems to help." Yes, it does. Yep. Yes, uh, caffeine is a no-no for me. Uh, and caffeine's in a lot of stuff. Yeah, like it is in a lot of stuff. Chocolate and hot chocolates. Mm -hmm. A lot of teas. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, no caffeine for me anymore. And sugar has been, I'd probably reduced 80 to 90% of my sugar intake. You even put your coffee in the um, freezer before you drink it. Yes. Yes. You do not, you can't handle hot beverages anymore. No, no more hot drinks, no more hot chocolates, no more hot coffees. <clears throat> Jerry says, Dave, can I mention channel out of BC I stumbled on? Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. What's the channel? I'm interested now. I'm, I'm basically, if anybody has a new channel, like anybody sees a channel spring up about Parkinson's, yeah. let me know. I will. I try and connect with everybody that I can. More people, the better. Yeah, the more the more channels on YouTube, the better. I say I'd like to see at least eight to ten active channels. That's my vision, my dream, and my hope. Yeah, we need to support everyone, right? Yeah, we all need to stick together. I'd like to okay. see eight to ten minimum. Pretty open. Like active channels, like there's tons of inactive channels. There's tons of channels that started on YouTube that just died out for who knows for whatever reason it doesn't really matter but I would like to see more that's just my personal thought I'm just reading the comments me too thanks I didn't think it would work to help me sleep but it, it could be without it you now yeah, if you've had Parkinson's for a little while, you're probably going to need some cinnamon to carry you through the night. I know some people take a little bit when they go to sleep, and when they wake up around midnight or 2 in the morning, they take a little bit more. I always talk to your doctor. Yeah, obviously talk to your doctor. But, yeah, I take the maximum melatonin. I know we've been going to a lot of doctors, but we're not doctors. Oh, Felicia says, got to get back to her. Proud of you both. Thanks for watching, Felicia. Love you, Felicia. Love you. That's really nice. She stopped in. She told me she would. Oh, okay. She told me she could make it. So I'm really happy. <laughs> it's Christmas all over again. <laughs> That's a whole other story. <coughs> <Sorry. sighs> Scott says, do you ever wake up coughing and choking on your saliva? No, I don't because I probably sleep 90% of the night on my side. And then obviously my pillowcases need to be washed on a regular basis. So, yeah, I'm not a back sleeper anymore, and that's probably due to the saliva and probably due to the mouth guard that I wear at night. Yeah, I don't think do 
I've caught a lot more lately more. Yeah, and I think the reason for that is I just haven't been getting the exercise the last few weeks. Yeah. When I, like, I definitely need some more, some more exercise. The last couple of weeks, it is, <clears throat> and a lot of that had to do with Christmas. Yeah, like speak therapy, all that, the mm -hmm. singing. <laughs> yeah, singing. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, internet went crazy. Yes, Jerry mentioned any channel that you find about Parkinson's, and um, I'm definitely interested in any new channels out there. Uh, if there's any new channels that I don't know about, I would like to connect with the, the creators or the owners of their channel and uh, just meet them and talk to them and encourage them. So, yeah, any Parkinson's channel out there at all covering awareness, I definitely want to connect with. So now that there's a lag on YouTube, we oh. have, to, have to wait for the answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a lag. Uh, I don't know what it is, if it's 30 seconds or a minute. Oh, but, it's Friday night. Oh. But the chat is ahead of us. <coughs> so when yeah. someone's, yeah, it's weird. You, you were telling me about that. Yeah. Laura, Laura. Hi, guys. I'm new to the channel. Hi. Hi, Laura, Laura. Nice to meet you. Feel free to tell us a bit about yourself. So we've been talking here tonight about uh, the new sponsor to the channel, Rogue Red Light Therapy Products. I can um, give you the link here real quick. This is the new sponsor of the channel. That brings us to two sponsors, which we're just pumped about. <sighs> Jerry's channel is StoryHive. Okay. Topic is TIP. This is Parkinson's. I have watched five. Okay. I'm going to put, I'm just going to take a no, picture. Right I'm going to take a picture of okay. it. Thanks, Jerry. I'm going to take a picture of that real quick because the chat disappears later on. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Thank you. I will check out the channel. What are you doing? That's my new phone. Yeah, so Laura, Laura, um, Red Light Therapy is Rogue Red Light Therapy is our new sponsor. That brings us to two sponsors. Our other one is Comfort Linen, and they uh, were really excited that they partnered with us. So if you're thinking about a red light, this is an opportunity to connect with a good company and indirectly support the channel, which we would, are always very grateful for. And then we've also been talking about our plan for World Parkinson's Day, that anybody can submit like a one to two minute video about how, how has Parkinson's affected your life? So basically a one to two minute video about how Parkinson's has affected your life in a horizontal so if you film yourself do it horizontally this is for YouTube shorts or TikTok. this is for YouTube basic videos or and if you don't want to do that if you want to remain anonymous just send an email to this email address David's life with Parkinson's at gmail.com And you can keep it anonymous if you want to. And then we're hoping everyone can come together on April 11th and watch the video together. And then everyone in the channel, gives everyone in the channel a chance to talk about how Parkinson's has affected their life. And hopefully we can get it by um, in March. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, so March 15th will be the hard cutoff day. And then I will be putting a video out about that as well as about Rogue being our new sponsor. The whole idea was to announce them as the new sponsor on this live broadcast. And they are very excited to. Looks really cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to get one. And when I do get one, I'm going to document my progress on the channel. 
And there is some compelling research out there that it helps with Parkinson's and other illnesses, but it is not a cure. <clears throat> Debbie says, having problems with typing, my doctor has given me controlled release to take at night to help keep my hand from shaking and keeping me awake. Yeah, Debbie, typing is difficult with me. Um, if you can believe it, the biggest problem with typing is my index finger is the one that for, is the first to give up. My index finger on my dominant hand is the first one to give up. Of course, you need to do all the stuff that, you, that your old job did. Yeah. It wouldn't work. Oh, it's just funny. All you can do is laugh sometimes. Yep. Dee says, Scott, Botox can help with drilling. Interesting. Hmm. Debbie Botox. says, I almost sometimes only sleep one to two hours a couple times a week. Oh, that is just. That's hard. That, yeah, Haley has a really hard time sleeping because of endometriosis. And she's lucky to get an hour or two a night as well. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious, Debbie, have they um, suggested any sleep aids? Like, um, I know a popular one I've discovered a lot of people are taking is clonazepam. Yeah, I have to ask your doctor. Yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Talk to your doctor always. Yeah, I'm definitely not trying to prescribe anybody anything, but um, I know clonazepam is something... My first MDS was excited to give me. He just starts talking about his cocktails. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I had a really bad run in was with mirtazapine. Oh, that was. Oh. Remember that day? Yes. I took half of mirtazapine and I wouldn't wasn't able to wake up the next morning. Yeah, I went to work around noon or one o'clock that day. Yeah, he was going to drive that morning, and I said no. Yeah, that was funny. Uh, he couldn't even like stand up. He... <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, it was really interesting. But it works for different people, of course. Yeah. Everyone's very different. I react with you and don't react with someone else. Yeah, uh, I love my clonazepam. Can Scott says, can you eat a steak an hour before taking leave of dopa? I know I can eat a steak, but will I want to? Probably not. Me, pills, and protein. I don't know if anybody else out there has a similar problem. Me, pills, and protein are not a great combination. Let's go say pee for peanuts, protein. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I have to, <coughs> Sorry. I try and take the main portion of my protein like later in the day around like after after five, five o'clock onward, because then I've got like two hours for the state to go through my system. So I take pills at 4 p.m. and then at 7 p.m. So I try and put the majority of my protein around four, around five. Yeah. Because I take my pills at four, so I wait an hour. Then I usually eat about eat about at about five or ten to five. Yeah. And then I take pills at seven. And then after dinner is when I do my exercise. And that helps speed the protein through my digestive system a little bit. Then I take my next pills at 7 and then at bedtime. Yeah, so, um, I've heard people say potatoes or pizza or... I was going to say, like, the high carbs. Yeah, but it's stuff, it's stuff that blocks your digestive system so yeah. that your pills don't work. Those are the things that you got to figure out. I took a swap to figure out what... Eat, not to eat mm -hmm. more times. Yeah, and it's the same for like if I have a early lunch, I'll try and eat it at 11 because then I have two hours because I take my pills at 10 and then I can eat at 11 and then I've got two hours until one. See, our day is very exciting. Yeah, <laughs> anybody <laughs> living our life, they might want to skip it. You know, very exciting life. Mm -hmm. Debbie said, my doctor suggested melatonin. Yeah, my first neurologist suggested melatonin right away. And I take the maximum 10 milligrams every night. I've been taking that for how many how many years have I had Parkinson's? Five. Almost oh, six years. 2017, I was diagnosed. This yeah. will be year seven. Yeah. 
So yeah, in May this year, it'll be my seventh year with Parkinson's. Oh no. Yes, I was diagnosed in 2017. Yeah, wow. Yeah, May May 8th. What was the date? May May 28th. May 28th, 2017. Yeah, so it'll yeah. be coming up in seven years. I've been taking wow. melatonin every night at maximum dose. You like mushroom? Lion's mane mushroom. Yeah, I take lion's mane mushroom. Debbie says I just take a five milligram pill. Well, I'm not telling you what to do, Debbie, but what I've heard some people do is they'll take that five milligram and then when they wake up, like around whatever time they wake up, let's say midnight or 2 a.m., they'll take the other five milligrams and go back to sleep. I just take the full 10. This is what works for Dave. Yeah, this is what works for you. I'm not suggesting you do anything. This is just what I've heard from other people. Yeah, but everyone's different. Charlotte says, I'm popping off. I wish you all a nice evening. Thank you, Charlotte. We're really glad to have met you, and thank you for stopping in. Jerry's asking, did anyone take the high B1 dose therapy? Yeah, I tried it, and um, I've been working the last two to three weeks on my update video for my (coughs) supplements video. Uh, the supplements video I put out, gosh, just over a year ago, and I've had a lot of requests to update it. So I have been working on it the last few weeks. It's a bit of a project because I do want to include a lot of information in there that I've learned about supplements the last few months. And my main source of information has been the um, the Parkinson's Research Interest Group on Facebook. There are some amazing experts in there. And they discuss all the different studies that come out. So it's not just like Dave at Life with Parkinson saying, I think everyone should take lion's mane mushroom because it helps my brain fog. But they're actually, they dig deep, really, really deep into the studies. And if you have a really good scientific question that you want to ask them about supplements, they will, the group moderator will allow most of those questions to come through. But it has to be something like, Something specific. Yeah, something with some meat on it. And a couple of weeks ago, I had a question about um, vitamin B2. And this person like asked the question in, in a very scholarly way. So I took that question to the research support group, and I had it discussed for like a week, and people posted like multiple studies I haven't been able to finish reading yet. So I'm going to like conglomerate all that into my – supplements update video and just talk about a lot of the things that this research group talked about with me so i learned a lot and i'm very grateful for that so yeah to answer your question quickly the b1 therapy did not work for me it spiked my anxiety to very high extreme levels and i had to stop taking my other supplements and it just it just didn't it was it was bad it was bad so For me, the B1 therapy didn't work. And if you look into the studies behind it, there is not a lot of evidence that it will work. And Debbie says, gave me 100, 200 CL controlled release. That's really helped my hand to keep from shaking and keeping me awake. So it stops your hand from shaking, but it keeps you awake. Yeah, that's that's tough. Yeah. Is there an option by timing, different timing you could do it? Instead of doing it at nighttime? Well, I think I think most of the people need some CL to get them through the night. I know I do. But that's why I take that's why I take for me anyhow, that's why I take everything together. That's why I take that big sleep cocktail all together. I take the magnesium to keep my feet from, from shaking and moving around in bed. Like, you know how you get that leg? You just can't keep your legs straight in bed or keep them. I'm not sure what it's called, this exact one. It must be going low. Anyhow. Movements? Yeah. You know when your your legs just keep going in the bed. So I take the magnesium L for that. Sleepless. I take the harp seal oil, which is like a super omega-3. to Help with that. Yeah, everybody knows omega-3 is good for the brain. I take the clonazepam to help keep the bad dreams away and keep me asleep. I take the melatonin 
the maximum dose, I'd take 20 milligrams if I could. Because, and I take the slow release melatonin. I don't take the quick release melatonin. I take the slow one because if I take the quick one, I'm awake at two. We don't want that. No, we don't want that. We don't want tired days. So that's why, that's how I basically came up with my own sleep cocktail. It works for different people. Yeah. But you got to find out what works for you. And D says, Scott, waiting an hour between protein and libido is a Important for med absorption. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> D's got it right. That's why I love my Movapo pen because it bypasses my digestive system entirely. Okay, um, we're coming up on two hours. Does anybody have any more questions? I'm happy to stay a little bit longer. Uh, I've really enjoyed tonight. It's been fun. Yeah, it has been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun meeting some new people, talking about some awesome topics and making plans for the channel. And yeah, really good, really good numbers. I know Debbie and Laura Laura popped in late. So if you want, have any questions, any more questions, we're happy to chat with them. Thanks, Trevor, for stopping in. Hi, Trevor. We'll, we'll make schedules. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, well, we'll just give it a couple more minutes. Jerry says, so glad that you are getting your channel to grow and Haley is sharing with you. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry, I am just stunned. <laughs> Uh, the amount of growth that this channel's had, like over the last 13 to 14 months, even with taking a break in there for a few months uh, because of uh, that. Yes, we don't want to talk about that. But yeah, just the people that are like commenting every week and all the positive comments and all the amazing interactions that we've had with people. And I'm really glad Haley's coming on board here more often. It's really great. Debbie's asking, can you say more about World Parkinson's Day? Absolutely. So the slow version is basically for World Parkinson's Day, we want to give the channel, like everybody on the channel. <coughs> Sorry. That's okay, Peter. We want to give everybody on the channel the opportunity to say something back to the world. So basically, we're planning to make a video based on everybody's contribution. So we're encouraging if people want to, they can do it anonymously if they want to as well. But we're encouraging everybody to make a one to two minute video about how has Parkinson's disease affected your life? Especially the early on people, early on. Yeah. There's more out early stages of an early young people yeah. getting it. Yeah, so we want the opportunity for everyone just to have the opportunity to say how has Parkinson's affected their life. So for me, uh, we talked about for a while, but for me, the biggest thing for me is the anxiety. That is the worst symptom and it's the symptom that affects me the most. And, and sometimes yeah. he doesn't know why he has anxiety. Yeah. Sometimes I, I don't even know. I'll be just sitting here. I'll be happy sitting here doing whatever, and then anxiety will just be like, ah, there's something wrong. And definitely the, high, the, part, the higher anxiety is, the less he moves. Yeah, it affects my movement really badly. Yeah. Jerry says, you are awesome. I watch many. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, I look forward to your comments. There's certain people that comment every video, and I actually look forward to those comments. Thanks for so. taking part. So please don't stop commenting. I actually look forward to your comments every week. There's probably about 10 or 12 people that comment every video. And yeah, I, I look forward to those comments every week. They actually make, they actually have a big impact on the, on the, on the, on the content uh, that we make. I get to know everyone too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Debbie's asking, how do we send the video? That is a great and question. That's your part. Yeah. So here we go. Please send it to this email address. 
David's Life with Parkinson's at gmail.com. And when you make your video, make it horizontally like this with your oh, phone. Sorry. This is, the white. this is for YouTube shorts and for TikTok. This is for YouTube. So horizontally, that will look the best. And that's how YouTube displays their videos is basically horizontally. Yeah, so one to two minutes. It, any topic, it, you know, if you've got a caregiver and they want to send a video in as well we're totally cool with that and uh, that more the better yeah caregivers relatives um, patients and even people that are stuck in a diagnosis like even people that are stuck do i have parkinson's or not i mean that's a big effect on your life well it takes time like the dopamine kicks out right 60 to 80 percent yeah you have to urge all that stuff to come out of you to mm -hmm. see the results. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's a lot of dopamine. Yeah. So April 11th is World Parkinson's Day. So I'm hoping, so <clears throat> I am going to put a video out probably in the next few days about this as well. It's going to be a hard stop on March the 15th. After March the 15th, we're not going to accept any new submissions. So everyone's got a good two months. So hopefully about March 11th, we'd like to yeah have a definitely people to say hey yes i got it no. yeah and if people want to go to anonymous they can just send an email and let me know they want to be anonymous and then we'll just put it on the screen or one of us will read it out we'll figure it out and then we're all we're going to set a time on april 11th or we're all going to hopefully watch well as many people as possible watch the video together we can put it out as a world premiere. So it'd be like this. There'll be a chat bar, and then hopefully the video comes on. <coughs> Sometimes there's technical problems with YouTube. <laughs> I just don't can't anticipate it. Don't get it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's. Um, and we'd like to get more caretakers and to see their outlook mm -hmm. on how they do it on a regular basis. So definitely get your caregivers or whoever it is mm -hmm. to put a video out too. And, yeah. yeah. With you, of course. Yeah. So that is the plan for World Parkinson's Day. I hope we explained that enough. If not, give enough information. Yeah. If, if you need a little bit more information, throw another question. Oh, Dad says, thanks for the good evening. I'll catch you later on the red light. Thanks, Dad. We love you, too. Thanks for watching and supporting. <coughs> Jerry said, so your big dyskinesia movements are not painful or aching afterwards? Well, they're painful if I hit my head on the wall. Scott says, thanks, guys. Good night. Thank you, Hi. Scott. Thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you again. Topper, thank you from Texas. Thank you, Topper. Wow, Texas. Yeah. Thank you very much for stopping in. Okay, I think, yeah, um, I'll give it another couple minutes. If there's any more questions, fire them off. But um, I am a low techie and I'm legally blind, so we'll see. We'll try and show you my guide on the video. Yeah, that would be really interesting. There is a way that you can, I don't know what kind of phone you have. I, I just switched from a, Apple. A, thank you, honey. From yeah. an Apple to an Android. But I think there is a way that you can film the video and then send it right away. There's got to be competitions on that one. Yeah, hopefully you can get a friend to come over. and Or email. Yeah. Or any, any way you want. Or mm -hmm. email. Yeah. We'll do whatever we can to, even if you just want to record your voice and send it. That's that's, yeah, that's, exactly. that's even good enough. Whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Very excited about World Parkinson's Day. Oh, it seems.
Close. Cartman. Hey, Cartman. Nice to meet you. Oh, oh my guard, my guy, Dog Dashy. Okay, I have an iPhone. Okay. Cartman, do you have deep brain stimulation? No, I haven't had deep brain stimulation. I'm on the <coughs> waiting list, and I've been on the waiting list for <coughs> three, three, three years. Three years. Yeah, I've been on the waiting list for three years. <coughs> And I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. <laughs> the problem where where we live in BC, there is a massive, massive waiting list for deep brain stimulation. There's only one neurologist who actually does the surgery for all of BC, and in the, and in yeah, in all of Canada, this is the longest waiting list in all of Canada. It is like almost 10 years long, which is oh just outrageous. I just can't imagine the number number of people that are suffering waiting so long to get a surgery yeah and they also want the younger people to do it yeah so it's cutting everyone up pretty slicey yeah so what we learned a little while ago was that once you get to a certain point with your parkinson's you can't have it so that is just makes this wait list just even more abominable but different rules for different places of course yes yes this is just in bc we know this mm -hmm. or so early yeah yeah, so Debbie, I think there is a way when you film it that you can hit a button and send it right away. But uh, I don't want to give you the bad directions. But I really hope that you can send something. We would love for as many people as possible to be involved in this video. And then, yeah, it'll be available for people to watch on the channel. And I think that would be nice. If, I think that would be nice. Okay, we're going to sign off, I think. Yeah, I think it's a good mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for everyone coming out and supporting the channel. Will I be able, well, Debbie's asking, will I be able to watch what I missed tonight? Yes, within a, within a couple minutes. Good night, Jerry. Good night, Jerry. It's been a great night. Thank you so much for coming. You can review it afterwards. Yeah. A couple minutes. So yes, Debbie, you will be able to watch this. Just give it about five or six minutes afterwards to upload to the channel, and it'll be under the live video section. I'm not sure how it looks on your YouTube channel, but it will show up there, and this will be available to watch. Yeah. Yes. The vagus nerve stimulation is up Hmm, I've never heard of that, D. I'll have to look that up. What is it, sir? Vegas nerve stimulation. V A G U S. Not, oh. not Las Vegas, just Vegas. It's just Vegas. Oh, oh yeah. That up yeah, thank you for stopping in, Debbie. I appreciate it so much. And I will put out a video about the new sponsor and the World Parkinson's Day instructions so everybody gets them fully. And then we're planning another live stream. Right now, the tentative date is. February the 10th. But, right. Yes. And we will be announcing a fundraising partnership and a couple other things which we're, which we're very excited about. So, yeah, there's going to be some fundraising efforts through this yeah. channel for Parkinson's research. And it's taking our time. Yeah, taking our time and making sure everything's, everything's all set to go so there's no, like, pullbacks. But to make sure everything is good to go. But yeah, we're very excited. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna say good night. Thank Bye. you very much, everybody, and we will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.